Welcome back to New York City. Come on inside the Cube. We're talking partners all week. It's just been amazing. Actually, really one day, but we've been down here most of the week, just tracking all the action, all the announcements. Alan Charbers here. He's a Executive Vice President of Partners at MongoDB, and Stephen or Orban is the VP of Migrations back in the Cube. Runs ISVs and Marketplace at Google Cloud. Guys, great to see you. Dave, thanks Thank for having you. us. You're very welcome. Alan, Thank thanks you. for having us at your show. Yeah, beautiful day in New York. Oh, yeah, it, evidently. Uh, I've been <laughs> chained here. Uh, you got here early. But we'll check it out a little bit later. So, you know, a lot of action in the ecosystem. I mean, that's really, you know, we talk about the leverage that you get from, from partnerships. But, Stephen, start us up. Explain your role what the relationship is between Google and MongoDB. Yeah, I'm happy to do that. And again, Alan, thanks for having us at your show. Dave, thanks for, thanks for being here as well. So I look after the ISV ecosystem, so all of the technology partnerships and data provider partnerships at Google Cloud. So making sure those companies run really well on Google and that we have a good joint go-to-market to help our mutual customers achieve their outcomes, as well as the marketplace business. And the relationship we've had with Mongo goes many years back, certainly lo longer than, than, than I've been uh, working at, at Google Cloud. I also had the opportunity to partner with Mongo at another company I worked with uh, uh, as well. But if I just kind of think back to the inception of Google Cloud and what our mission is, which is to help customers accelerate their digital transformations, we have hundreds of different services ranging from compute, networking, database storage, analytics, AI. but there's no way that we would possibly be able to satisfy every customer requirement. So our mission is to have the world's most open ecosystem using the tools that our customers, many of whom are developers, want. And it turns out that MongoDB is one of the most loved tools by developers worldwide as evidenced by the millions of developers that, that use it. So stemming for many years, we've been doing deep integrations between the two companies to meet developers where they are and make sure that they have the best database capabilities from Mongo to power anything that they would do on, on GCP. So there's, I think there's a couple of new integrations that we can probably talk about over the course of this segment, but it's been a partnership that's been going on for many years and one that works so well because we, we share the love of making developers happy. We, we, our developers love Mongo. We run the Cube AI. Uh, go to thecubeai.com, check it out. Ask a question what Steven Orban thinks about something. Just go ahead and ask it and you'll see. <laughs> you'll see a clip from him from a couple of years ago or maybe at Google Cloud Next or whenever it was. But so, I mean, but that is really what this show is all about. It's like attracting the developers appealing. That's why you guys go around to 23 cities and that's why you got to showcase your partners. Yeah, 100%. Um, I like to thank Steven as well. We're friends. We like to joke with each other. Uh, there's constant jabs about the Patriots versus Bills. Uh, he's, no a bills. Big, he's a big Bills fan. And one day they'll win Super Bowl under his watch. But, uh, but, but I would well, like to see that, by the way. <laughs> you mean, but all seriousness, uh, I've only been waiting my whole life for it. Uh, you know, these, this show is about bringing our customers and partners together. And, you know, MongoDB, I've been here for nine years, and it's been an honor to figure out how we bring partners in, give them access to our thousands of customers. And Google has always been there for us. People don't know the story, but some of them don't know the story, but at a time when um, it was very competitive with the hyperscalers in Mongo, Google was there for us. Uh, I met Thomas Kurian, I think in 2019, when he joined uh, Google, and he had a different strategy of working with the open source community than the others did. And he brought MongoDB to his cloud, and his team, Kevin Ichaprani, worked with us where we offered Atlas on Google Cloud as a first class offering. And that loyalty, joint value proposition to our customers, where we didn't compete, we went to market together, always stuck with us. And that's why we had a phenomenal partnership since 2019. We, won, we win awards with each other every year, but more importantly, customers who run Atlas on Google are very happy. And Steven joined the firm, I think two, three years ago. Year and a half. Year, year and a half ago. Steven's taken that business to the next level. It's not just MongoDB, but we bring in other parties to the fold with Google Cloud, especially with the marketplace. We've been uh, excited about the growth to date and there's more to come. Well, as an analyst, I've been watching this space for a while and you know, uh, Google's uh, Google got the best tech. I've always said that. You got late, a little late getting to the cloud, trying to get off the ground. What, what's happening now in the data, it's very obvious, is you know you guys all announce your quarterly earnings and we kind of track it and squint through how much of that's really IS, whatever. But what's clearly happening in the data is the acceleration in AI. 
and 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 Google is growing by, by our data faster than 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 anybody. Obviously, OpenAI has had a big impact, but what's happening with Gemini and Vertex, and we're coming off of Google Cloud Next, we can see the acceleration of adoption, the percent of customers that are actually migrating, maybe not even migrating, but tapping Google. So you've got Gemini Code Assist, you guys are involved in that. Let's start there, explain what that's yeah, all about. Yeah, so I mean, it's one of the reasons I, I decided to join Google a year and a half ago, as it was clear to me anyway, how well positioned that we were on the AI front. Now I would be lying if I were saying I predicted sort of the Gen AI uh, cycle that we're in today before that, but I'm certainly glad I'm on, um, 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 I'm on this side of the fence uh, uh, for it. And, and it's one of those things where like, and I've been in the cloud business for a long time, pretty much since the inception of public cloud, at least in the enterprise segment. And at the early days of cloud, it was very much still a CIO and a technology agenda. But if you fast forward to today and what we're seeing with artificial intelligence, now it's like a boardroom at CEO level um, concern because they want to understand how this uh, 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 technology is really going to help them transform. And it's another one of those areas where we have deep integrations going on between us and Mongo so that we can collectively really meet customers where they are. So to just give you a couple of examples, you, you mentioned the Gemini Code Assist. Gemini Code Assist is a service that we have inside of the Google Cloud Console where developers or customers who are using our services can ask questions and get natural language responses using Gemini, our, our, our LLMs. Well, we partnered with Mongo to make sure that the best Mongo knowledge base was used to train that model up so that a developer could get help, not just on Google services, but on Mongo as well. So if they wanted to be able to get help to write a query for how they would access data using this particular schema on this database that they're running on Google Cloud, they're able to do that right away. Um, another example is um, Mongo uh, launched something um, called a Vertex AI extension. So Vertex is our platform that developers use to create, they take foundational models that we have in our model garden and then they tweak and tune them using their own data and their own, um, uh, their own intellectual property. Well, now Mongo's made an extension available so that we can meet those customers who use and want to continue to prefer Mongo as their data store to do that as part of their retrieval augmentation. So that, that's just a couple of examples. I think maybe if you want to talk about Map also or... Yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, first I'll, I'll, re, uh, I'll definitely agree that from a tech perspective, AI has always been in the DNA of Google. Um, I remember Thomas telling the story about what's happening in Gmail just via Compose, where AI is helping you, know, you write emails, or what's going in YouTube and search, AI has always been in the DNA of the company. So then as they extend that to co-pilots and being able to work with RAG architectures, it became natural. Um, our partnership with Google, has, re because of our programs, has re actually res resonated and resulted in customer success with AI. One thing you're hearing is that we love what's going on with AI, but where's the beat? Where is the actual customer ROI where their use yep. case is going in production? We work, one of the most exciting use cases I've been working on with one of our partners was an automotive company where they're doing audio forensics of the car. You know a little bit about this, where based on what the car sound makes when the car has a problem, you can detect the issue. The technician can get, go get the fix generated from AI. That's running on Atlas, on Google Cloud, using Gemini. That's, That's very a cool. in production use case, thanks to our partnership, and many more like that, many of those will come. You ever listen to that show, Click and Clack? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The car guys? They spoke, they spoke at my commencement, I think. <laughs> Long time ago. And they, and they would say, there's some, some guy or gal would call up and they say, what kind of sound is it making? Is it a clunk clunk or a wee -wee? <laughs> You know, and they'd say, to make the sound, they'd have them make the sound. Well, they were you'd, hilarious. You'd be, you'd be shocked. That is the use case that AI is doing for this uh, automotive company. And you would be shocked how it's, a, it's not easy. Okay, people think like, oh, you just glue a couple things together. But audio is not first nature, first thought of for these LLM models. Training LLM models on text and pictures is usually what's going on. No one thought, well, let's train it on audio. That doesn't exist that much. Thanks to Gemini and our yeah. partners, we were able to do that for this automotive And it's company. different than like Shazam, because that's just matching a pattern, whereas 
this is like an infinite number of, of sounds, right? It's, I mean, there are people that are on our team working with this customer, which can diagnose the actual, break it down by the wave of the, like the, how, how a sound wave is created through the sound. Things that I forgot about a long time ago when I was school, they're doing this in production for a customer. Phenomenal amazing. work. But it wouldn't happen if it wouldn't have partnerships. And, like and one, of, one of the many cool things about this use case is that particular customer took one of our models, Gemini, and then tweaked it and trained it with their own data. The data that they have on the sounds of the cars is not something that's publicly available on the internet that anybody could just train a public model on. So, so they had to like take the data that they were storing in MongoDB, combine that with our technology in Gemini to actually train the model to be able to give somebody who wanted to do a diagnostic and just by listening to that sound, a tool to do so. And there aren't many other technology platforms or combinations that, that you can do that with today. I love this. You take the car in to the mechanic and he says, you need a new tranny. Well, wait a minute. If I, <laughs> my AI says I just need new spark plugs. Um, let's talk about the MAP program. We've been talking about it all week. Uh, you guys announced it earlier this week. Um, MAP stands for MongoDB AI Application Program. Yes. Uh, Google's part of that. Why is this important? What do people need to know? I think is what people need to know is that um, enterprises, especially, and the CXOs within those enterprises know they need to implement Gen AI in their application fleet, but they're struggling on how, what's the security, governance, what's the actual use case that they should use it in, are they going to get the ROI, or are they going to spend a lot of money for no reason? A lot of CXOs are struggling with that. So what we've heard from many CXOs, MongoDB has 50,000 plus customers, and they keep telling us, MongoDB, can you prescribe what we should do based on our industry? So what the MAP program really does, to summarize it is, if it's a customer who all they want are stories of what, generic stories of what other customers are doing in their space with AI, with Mongo, are they looking for reference architectures? Are they looking for um, best practices? We provide that to them through MAP as a pre-sales engagement. If they're looking for a rapid prototype because they kind of understand what the use case they want, but they want to prototype it, we help them in a pre-sales, post-sales capacity. If they are convinced that this is what I want based on those first two engagements, we can help them post-sales with a full-blown implementation run by our services team and our partners of SIs. And now in that stack, We've picked certain partners that is very popular within our customer base, LLM providers, framework providers, SIs, and obviously the hyperscalers. We brought them those under our umbrella so that we can prescribe recipes for all of those three buckets. Whether they just want best practices, whether they want a prototype, or whether they want a full-blown production rollout. Yeah. So, go ahead. Yeah, yeah it's exciting. To, uh, just to reiterate, it's exciting for us really for for two reasons. One, it's illustrative of the reciprocal nature of our partnership. So I talked a little bit about with Gemini Code Assist how we're embedding Mongo information and their technology into ours. In this case, they're taking an engagement to help customers identify the right use cases and how to pursue them using best practices and embedding our technology in it. So I think um, that's really wonderful. And then I agree with Alan that one of the, while it is a CEO and board level uh, agenda, a lot of customers are saying, how do I get started? How do I prioritize the right use cases? You said something about industry and like from where, from where I sit, we see a lot of customers in regulated industries yes. approaching generative AI different than those who are in non-regulated industries. You bet. And the, regula the regulated industries, it tends to be more internal use cases. How do I make my knowledge workers who are facing off with my wealth management clients or my patients, uh, how do I enable my internal workers to face off with them better and then in non-regulated industries like advertising, it's very much, much more moving quickly on end customer use cases. So I think taking what we're learning together and then packaging that in Mongo's program as they're helping customers reason about those use cases is, is I think, just a fantastic benefit for customers. You could see like, wh why does Mongo have the right to create this program? Okay. And I'll, I'll give yeah. you my, okay. why, why I think. Yeah. Tell us why, why I think. I mean, First of all, our partnership with the hyperscalers are phenomenal. The hyperscalers and Mongo together are creating this program. And think about where we fit in the stack, okay? Today, 50,000 customers are using us for 
meta data application use cases or operational data application use cases. And we've offered them vector data base as well. So now they're coming to us and say, well, I want to deploy AI into my application fleet that I've already built with you for operational and meta. How do I do that? So it's important for us to, when we're customer centric, to give them an answer to that. And that's the genesis of MAP. It's not because we want to do a lot of publicity. We really are uh, handling what the customers want from us. They're already using our products. They want to use it with Vector. They want to use it with LLMs from uh, hosted on Google. And we have the right to go give them that, that knowledge. The second reason is we internally have struggled with this. How do we deploy Gen AI in our own uh, company? It's not as easy as you think. So we've learned the hard way. We're drinking our own champagne on how to use our own vector products on the security side, the legal side, where the data resides. And we feel like we want to give that knowledge back to our customers. Yeah, it's like when sometimes you know, people walk into a wine shop and they're like, I, I don't know, just tell me what to buy. And so they, you know, somebody who's an expert curates it, says, hey, well, what do you, what do you, what do you serve yes. for dinner? What yes. do you like? Well, well, here you go. This yeah. one is for you. Don't yeah. touch that. You don't like sweet wine. Okay, whatever it is. When I was prepping for this, so one of the things we like to do in the cube is really try to understand these, these types of relationships, how deeply the integration goes. So when I was prepping for this, it's like, I saw some things on the integration side that I want to I want to just ask you guys about. You got Atlas search nodes available on GCP. No. We got Vertex extensions. We, we, Vertex AI extensions, we talked about that for Atlas. Spark integration for BigQuery. Yep. That's something we didn't talk about. Mago joining Google's industry value network. Mm -hmm. uh, you got n new integrations with GCP beyond that. Uh, MongoDB Atlas integration with GCP's uh, manufacturing engine. I mean, it's on and on and on. D Google distributed cloud, MongoDB enterprise. So there's like six or seven things here that... And those are all just the new things that we've announced <laughs> in the last <laughs> not, of, right. couple of weeks or so. Right, right. Yeah. There's also all people the behind this. The, the amount of people dedicated to each other's partnership we're talking over 20 between the two companies. Okay, we're separate companies, but we have 20 people that sit in a business unit between the two companies. All they are work on is are these integrations and how we call so together. Then we have obviously thousands of people around them to scale to all the customers, but that's a true sign of a, of a real relationship. When there's debt, not like one person, Steven and I, there are teams working on this partnership. And you know, the hyperscales you mentioned before, the giving a gift to the world really truly are. I mean, all this money that you guys make from us clicking on your ads, you're now pouring back into building out, <laughs> you're spending it on CapEx, you're building out GPUs, just like the internet. You think about the internet, that benefited the entire society. You know, a lot of winners, obviously, a lot of losers too. D Dave mentioned that. You know, you don't see some of these companies like Lycos and, 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 and you know, AOL, nobody cares right. about it anymore. They were the granddaddy back then. But then you saw, you know, all these. You saw Google, Amazon, uh, PayPal, the 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 social media giants all come out of the internet. That was there. That was a gift that we could build on. The same things happening here with all the capex that you guys have been building out. You're coming out of Google Cloud next. We were there a couple of weeks ago. We saw all this innovation. You know, we're a, we're a Google uh, account. We use Gmail. We use all the thank the you productivity tools. Appreciate yeah, that. Thank you. I mean, it's it saves our lives. It doesn't really matter what laptop we're on, we could just connect to the cloud. And so those are things that have drive, driven productivity and the same thing's happening here. We're in early days. Uh, I'll give you guys the last word. Like I guess say, you got momentum coming out of Google Next, still early in the year. We're still early days. Give us your closing thoughts. Yeah, I mean, we do have some momentum and we were super excited coming out of Next, particularly around the validation that we got from a lot of these large, uh, both developers, but also enterprise customers, you know, who are using us in very material ways to to power their business. But like you said, it's still early innings and we think the best is yet to come. And as long as we continue to partner with amazing companies like Mongo and meeting developers and customers where they are with great technology, the rest will just take care of itself. Right. I would I say, um, I would finish with, I think there is a little bit confusion that people think AI is bad for consulting firms and services companies. I would argue it's the opposite. I, uh, I think AI is giving services and consulting firms such a competitive advantage and the ability to deliver so much better than the years before. Whether you're a large strategy firm or a big global in uh, system integrator or a small boutique somewhere in my hometown, Boston, the more you leverage AI, the more your customers are gonna want your services 
because many of them don't know what to do with AI and you have the ability to help them transform their business quickly, leveraging these technologies and hopefully MongoDB. I love that. The best is yet to come. Guys, thanks so much. I really appreciate thank you coming on theCUBE. And thank you for watching. Keep it right there. We're back for more action from MongoDB Local. You're watching theCUBE. This is Dave Vellante. We'll be right back.